talk to us about the layers. I liked the description you called Cake Ventures, the layers in which you're going to be targeting when looking to deploy your money. Exactly. Thanks for having, having me. So Cake Ventures is focused on big technological changes combined with demographic shifts. And we back and uh, invest capital into companies that touch areas of demographic change, including aging and longevity, increased spending power of women, and the rise of a new majority. Talk to us about the rise of a new majority, because I think that's a really fascinating shift. You're sort of talking about tech adopters who are coming from, well, minority-led areas, particularly more, more the people of color, Asian communities, that are building something culturally as well as financially, really. Correct. Um, you know, these three groups, Asian, Black, and Latinos, have an increasing um, influence on internet culture, uh, increasing their spending power. And I think uh, for Cake Ventures, that means that this is an area that we want to invest in and invest in quite early. Hey, Monique, congratulations, as, as Caroline said. It's really interesting to speak to a new name in the world of venture capital. We've been talking to founders, uh, you know, all week pretty much about how difficult it's been to raise money for those startups in this environment. And I kind of want to put the same question to you, you know, who are your LPs? Where did the money come from? And how, how hard was it for you to get this vehicle finalized? Well, we have great LPs like uh, Pivotal Ventures, a Melinda French Gates company, uh, Bank of America, Sendana Capital, uh, Foundry Group, fund of funds like that. Um, and, you know, we are in a really challenging time for entrepreneurs and for emerging fund managers. Um, I, I won't deny that. But, um, you know, if you are building, there, there's never been a better time to be building something uh, game changing in technology. And the capital is out there, but it is a difficult time and will continue to be a difficult time uh, over the next several, mo several months to a year um, for people starting new companies. Hey, Monique, I'm also really interested in you as well. You know, I'm reading that you guys are going to kind of cut $500,000 checks, that kind of increment. You know, how are you going to do business? Are you going to go out there and have one-on-ones with these founders? Are you inviting pitches and pitch decks to come into you? I, I just want to know how it works, essentially. So I've already invested in, in 12 companies out of this portfolio. Um, I'm, I'm a longtime venture capitalist. I was at 500 startups before as a VC and uh, also was a scout at Lightspeed. And so I have a really great deep network of people in venture who know me, know my uh, investing thesis and track record, and who I can work with and collaborate with in order to do great deals. Now, I also go out and, and hunt for deals, uh, which is one of my favorite things to do, is finding new uh, undiscovered founders, building something uh, that fits into the three layers of the cake. And that's really exciting for me. Where are these founders based, more often than not, Monique? So although I'm based in San Francisco, 66% of the companies that I've invested in so far have been uh, outside of quote unquote, Silicon Valley, San Francisco Bay Area. And that's something that we'll continue to press on. You know, I think that great innovation comes from many different places. Uh, and we're excited to invest in places um, that are out, out, outside of Silicon Valley, as well as companies that originate from right here. And let's dig in a little bit more to those layers that I so love you talking about. But thinking about the way in which you're looking at demographic changes, longevity and the like, what companies have therefore you backed? What are the sort of problems ultimately they're trying to fix? One of my companies is called Guaranteed, and they are using technology to change end of life and hospice care. That's, that fits into the aging and longevity layer of the cake. We're super excited to, um, to back that company. Um, I've also invested in a company called Pamper, which uh, focuses on nails and, and nail art that fits into the women, uh, women layer of the cake. Um, and we're, we're excited to continue, you know, filling out the layers of the cake with amazing companies building uh, not only consumer products, but also building in the business to business and enterprise space. Hey, Monique, one of the things I'm always fascinated by when we, we have VCs on, it, it, I guess it's not just as simple as you handing over the money, right? And I guess when you, when you launch a thematic fund, my question to you is, what other help do you offer these founders? What is it your pitch to them on why they should partner with you, why they should take your check over somebody else's? 
So I built Cake to own the white space around demographic change because demographic change is what is going to impact every single company that is being started today, whether you know it is strictly focused on aging or whether it is a more generalized company. And so one of the things that uh, founders and entrepreneurs look to me and Cake for is really helping them understand and define which demographic changes are going to be the most impactful to their companies and how to take advantage of those in a way that is both authentic and helps accelerate their growth. We were talking just about the economic environment when we now find ourselves. And some have said, you know, obviously dire straits for VC, but exciting times in seed. And some many have thought maybe the talent, the talent that's being let go at the moment and with the countless layoffs means people are going to build right now. Do you abide by that thesis? Or are you thinking actually now's the time that you're looking for the companies that have already been built and perhaps aren't taking such a risk in this time? No, definitely. You know, layoffs are a really challenging time for anyone. No one, you know, wants to hear about big companies laying off uh, a large amount of their staff. But, you know, just like uh, during the great financial crisis, a lot of those a lot of those people ended up starting companies that are that have been category defining companies like Airbnb and Uber. And I think that because we are in a recession and we are in a um, you know, we are really in a challenging economic time, a lot of people will now start to uh, start new companies of their own. And these can be the, um, you know, the next big companies that, that ex experience amazing growth.